lesson 7.5. We have learned about logs. We have learned about exponential equations. We have learned about some properties amongst the two and how they connect. Now, it is how do we solve the equations that involve either exponents or logs. Okay, so as I suggested, gold paper and calculator are both going to be useful depending on the problem today. Okay, if you look at example one, notice the heading is solving an exponential equation with matching bases. In other words, you can get these bases to match. And so what is our process if we can get the bases to match, which means the gold paper is going to be our primary item of use when we can get the bases to match. So as we look at example A, 16 to the 3x equals 8. As of right now, my x is in the exponent. We don't really have a way to solve when x is in the exponent until today. We have 16 and 8. Not the same. So your first question when you do an equation like this is, can I make my bases match? Can I make six? Can I rewrite 16 and 8 in a way that they have matching bases? Can I rewrite 16 and 8 so that they have matching bases? Yes, because they are both in that two column, correct? Okay, so again, and these are numbers that are helpful to know. I mean, yes, I provide you the gold paper to help, but so let's rewrite. 16 can be rewritten as what according to this paper? 2 to the 4th. And yeah, we could say 4 to the 2nd. However, that doesn't help. I want to have the same base. So we're going to use 2 to the 4th. So this is 2 to the 4th raised to the 3x. What about 8? How can 8 be rewritten? 2 to the third. So good news, we have bases of 2s. What are your thoughts about 2 to the fourth raised to the 3x? How can that be rewritten? 2 to the 12x. Because a power raised to a power, you multiply. So this can be rewritten as 2 to the 12x, and it already equals 2 to the third. We've kind of already done something like this. When we were first learning about logs two lessons ago, how do we continue solving? Sorry. Yeah, if the bases are the same, you can drop the bases off and set the exponents equal to each other. That was the whole point of getting the bases the same. So drop the twos off and I have the equation 12x equals 3. And you can solve this, yes? If it's 12 times x, what do I do? What? Divide by... Not divide by 3, divide by 12. If it's 12 times x equals 3, divide by the 12. 12's cancel. And I have x equals 3 divided by 12. Well, we could say 3 twelfths, but I'd prefer you at least reduce. What is 3 over 12 reduced to? 1 fourth, because they both divide by 3. If you took the lazy bone calculator way, instead of doing that part in your head, your decimal on the calculator is 0.25, right? Which is equivalent. It's less work on your brain, though. I mean, here's, okay, here's my job as a math teacher. My job as a math teacher is to grow your math skills, right? You know, and part of that is sometimes using our brains over our calculators. Yes, a calculator is helpful to use. Yes, you can do this on the calculator, but, you know, 
you guys always hate fractions, right? But being able to work with fractions is still important. Fractions do carry places in life, believe it or not. You will come across fractions. So. Okay, ready to try B? Let's try B. 27 to the 3x equals 81. Hmm. Eli says he sees 27 and 81 both in the 3 column. And again, it's all about them being in the same column, isn't it? So let's do a rewrite. 27 is 3 to the 3rd. That's going to be raised to the 3x. 81 is 3 to the 4th. What's that step I take here? Multiply the powers. A power raised to a power we multiply. So this is actually going to be 3 to the 9x equals 3 to the 4th. What do you notice? Same base. So drop those bases of 3s and set the exponents equal to each other. If 9x equals 4, to solve, we're going to divide by 9, and x is 4 ninths. 4 ninths on the calculator is, can anyone do it? 0.4 repeating. Mm -hmm. When you have a number over 9, it's that number repeating. Bless you. Okay, we got the hang of that? Because I think, if you don't mind, I'm going to skip C and say let's jump to D. Okay, because C, you can find them both in the 4 column. I will tell you that C, if you want to work it, has an answer of 3 eighths. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the D. To the, I'm going to say to the D column. I'm going to jump to part D or problem D. And why am I jumping to part D? That's a fraction. Exactly. we got to work with Carter here. And everyone else that's also scared of fractions besides Carter. Because he's far from the only one. Okay. We did these earlier in the week in a way, right? Or maybe it was last week, whichever. Forget the fraction for a moment. I don't see any fraction for the moment. I see numbers of 4 and 8. What do you know about 4 and 8? They're both in the 2 column, right? So, 1 over 4, I'm going to rewrite as 1 over 2 squared. 8 to the 3x, well, 8 is... 2 to the 3rd raised to the 3x. Okay. Can't ignore that fraction now. I don't want it to be a fraction. Instead of 1 over 2 to some power, I just want it to be 2 to a power. Do you remember from earlier this week? Or last week? Whichever it was. What do you remember, Kendra? Yeah, how did it get in the denominator with a positive exponent? It came from being a negative exponent up top. So 1 over 2 squared is the same as saying 2 to the negative 2 when you take it out of that denominator. 2 to the 3rd raised to the 3x is really 2 to the... 9x. 3 times 3x is 9x. And now does this problem look like all the others? Yeah. My bases of 2's are the same, so drop the two bases and negative 2 equals 9x. Be careful, how do I solve for x? 
divide by 9 because what do we need to get away from x? The 9. So divide by 9. What is my answer here? No calculator needed. Negative 2 divided by 9 is negative 2 ninths. If you did not calculator, you got negative 0.2 repeating, right? So fractions are doable. They're not something to turn and run away from this time. They aren't ever, but especially not this time. Let's go ahead and try E. It has another fraction. What are the two numbers we're focusing on? 25 and 625. So, where are 25 and 625 both at on this gold paper? In the fives, right? And I would think you probably could have guessed the fives. You just have to work to figure out exactly what powers they are. So 1 over 25 is 1 over 5 squared. And then still raised to the 2x. 625 is 5 to what? 5 to the 4th. Okay. What do we know about that scary fraction? Can we make it not a scary fraction? Yeah. To take that 5 to the second out of the denominator, make it 5 to the negative second. And it's 5 to the negative second raised to the 2x. 5 to the negative second raised to the 2x makes it? 5 to the negative 4x. So I have 5 to the negative 4x equals 5 to the 4th. I guess technically I should put the 5 to the 4th on the previous line. We didn't do anything other than just carry it down. Can you finish it? The 5s are the same. So we can drop our bases and make the equation. Negative 4x equals 4. In order to solve, I'm going to divide by negative 4. 4 divided by negative 4 makes my answer negative 1. That's not too bad. Okay. And I haven't talked about it, but you could use the calculator to do some checking here on some of these. And that you could take your answer and put it back into, you know, like the original problem using your calculator and see if it works. Okay. You got the hang of that. That relates back to something we did previously, yes? Well, let's go down to example two, our second type of problem for the day. Fifteen to the three x equals two eighty five. You notice the heading on this section is solving exponential equations with different bases. Which technically my last ones had different bases too, but we could make them the same. So obviously in homework, on a quiz, on a test, you're not going to have a heading that says different bases, same bases. So my first question is always going to be how can I make the bases the same? Or can I make the bases the same? So I'm always going to start it off by going to my gold paper. Can I do anything with 15 and 285? Are, 15, are either of those even on this paper? No. 15 is 3 times 5. It's not something to a power. 285 is not something to a power either. There's multiple factors in there. Okay? So we need a plan B. Okay, and plan B is a total different step. Okay, since I can't make the 15 and 285 the same, which would be my preference, 
we're going to take the log of each side. Okay? You can use log as an L-O-G, or you could use natural log as an L-N. We'll just use log, and the default here would be to use log base 10 because our calculator can do it. And guess what? Where we're going with this. We're going to have to have the calculator in this one. And if you notice the directions, notice what the direction says. Round to the nearest thousand. That indication right there is it's a calculator problem. So, when I say take the log of each side, I mean basically take each side and write the word log in front of it. So, my equation becomes the log of 15 to the 3x equals the log of 285. And we're doing this because our x is in our power. We don't have a good way to solve until we get x out of the power. So, step one, we take the log of both sides. Now, in the last lesson, I taught you four properties. And we're going to have to use those properties some. Do you see the property you want to use, Allie? Yep, power property. The power property says we can take the, the exponent of 3x and move it out front, which means I can write this as 3x times the log of 15, still equaling log of 285. Good news. I got the x out of the exponent, right? And that's your biggest thing, is to get the x out of the exponent. Because once you get x out of the exponent, it goes back to the solving rules you've been using for years. Okay, what is it I'm trying to solve for? X, right? Okay. What all is hanging out with X? A 3. A 3. And? Log of 15. What's holding that 3, that X, and that log of 15 together? Multiplication. Because even though it's not here, that's really 3 times X times log 15. What operation undoes multiplication? Division, yes? So do you see where I'm going with this? In order to solve for x, we need to divide by 3 and log 15. If you don't mind me doing this all in one step. Now, if you'd prefer, you could divide by 3 first and then come back and do another step and divide by log 15. As long as you can use the calculator carefully and correctly, we can do this all in one step. So, if I divide the left by 3 log 15, guess what we have to do on the right? Divide the right by 3 log 15. Notice what happens on the left. 3's cancel and log 15 cancels. Leaving me with what? X. So, x equals log of 285 divided by 3 log of 15. There's no negative on the 3. We're just dividing by a 3. There's no negative in this problem. Why are you getting a negative? I'm not getting confused. I'm just asking. Yeah. Okay. So that's the reason I'm confused? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if it's because you're thinking because it's in a denominator, it's a negative, but it wasn't an exponent. That's, I'm guessing, where you were going? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Grab the calculators. This is important. You know how to use the calculator you like to use. Okay. So have a calculator in front of you and practice. Now, here's the deal. You have to be careful with how you do this because 3 and log 15, the denominator, are two different things. If you do this without parentheses and say log of 285 divided by 3 log 15, it's going to divide by 3 and multiply by log 285 and give you an incorrect answer. So you can either do log of 285 divided by 3 
divide by log of 15, or use parentheses, specifically around that denominator. If you want to be safe, you can do parentheses around the numerator. But the parentheses around the denominator are necessary because there's multiple things in the denominator. So I'm going to do log of 285. Into that parenthesis on my calculator that I'm going to do divided by. Now, because I have more than one quantity in the denominator, I'm going to start a set of parentheses. And then I'm going to type 3 log 15. Officially, into the parentheses on the 15, into the parentheses on the 3 log 15. I will tell you, if you don't end parentheses at the very end of a problem, it's usually not a big deal. Does your answer match my answer? Yeah. If you're saying no, go back and try things again and see what's going on. If you say yes, then you know how to use the calculator sitting in front of you. Now, direction said to round to the nearest thousand, but yet in my answer key, I have four decimal places. I wonder if I did that because homework does that. Hmm. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I don't remember. Okay, let's go four decimal places. That's what my answer key has. I'm wondering if that's what homework does. What is four decimal places? Okay, yeah, it reads six, nine, five, seven, but the six tells the seven to go up, which makes this approximately 0 0.6958. And so I'm going to go up and adjust. That is the ten thousandths position we did. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. Okay. You got the idea? If you got the idea, try B. I will likely skip C, but let's at least try B. Make sure you get the idea before we move on to something more difficult in the bottom row, right? So, first question I'm going to ask myself on B. So, I'm going to go to that gold paper. Can 5 and 130 be rewritten with the same base? And the only way 5 is 5 to the first. Is 130 there? Nope. So... If I can't rewrite them with the same base, what do I do? Take the log of both sides. So if we take the log of both sides, I'm going to write this as log of 5 to the 2x equals log of 130. Once I take the log of both sides, what do I do? Move the power out front. So if I move that power out front, I now have 2x times log of 5 equals log of 130. Okay, your turn. How do I solve for x? Divide by 2 log of 5? Because it's 2 times x times log 5. So they're being multiplied, so we divide away anything we need to divide away. So I'm going to divide by 2, log 5. 2, log 5. The idea is the 2's cancel, log 5's cancel, x equals 
log 130 divided by 2 log 5. Now how to do this on the calculator? Your goal is to match my answer, right? You can do log 130 divided by parentheses 2 log 5. Or if you want, you could do log 130 in the parentheses. You could do divide by 2, divide by log of 5. And that will give you the correct answer as well. Does your answer match my answer? By all means, if you're struggling to figure out what you're doing wrong on the calculator, please ask. Let me help you figure out your calculator. If it's not my normal calculator, it might take me a moment longer, but I will figure it out. It drives me crazy when I can't figure a calculator out, so just saying. Okay, what kind of answer did you give here if we're going to the nearest 10,000? Uh, 1.512, one currently, but it goes up to a 2 because the 8 pushes it up. 1.5122 approximately. And here's the deal. You know Math Excel won't let you just leave it. So <laughs> Okay, I was going to skip C just because notice it has the same format as the last two we've just done, right? I think you guys hopefully are getting the hang of C. If you tried C or you want to try C, I have written down 2.0918 as my answer. You 2.0918. Sorry, I wrote it off the screen, didn't I? Okay. D, 5.2 to the 3x plus 1 equals 400. Can I use my gold paper? Part of me says no because it's in this section. But really the answer is no because 5.2 and 400, it's not going to happen. Here's the deal. As soon as you see a decimal in the base, don't even think gold paper. It's not going to work. So, if I can't make these bases the same, what do I do? Take the log of both sides. So, the log of 5.2 to the 3x plus 1 equals the log of 400. After you take the log, what is step two? Power property. Move that power out front. And this is where the catch is on this problem, yes? Yeah. My power is no longer just a 2x, a 3x. It's a 3x plus 1. So that's going to make life a little more difficult, of course. That adds a step of difficulty in this problem. But we'll get it. So I'm still taking my power out front now. Because my power is a sum, because it's more than just one factor or one quantity, I'm going to have to put in parentheses. So this is 3x plus 1, that quantity, times log of 5.2 still equals log of 400. And now my job is to solve for x. There's two different directions we could go here. I'm kind of curious what you guys see. And based on the fact that we get to do all of the actual work in the calculator, both are fine. So what's your thought? As in add 3x and 1? 
No, we can't combine 3x and 1 because, yeah, they're not like terms, right? In order to add 3x plus 1, they both have to be x's. And so, unfortunately, that would make life a lot easier, wouldn't it? Okay, so plan B, I can't add 3x and 1. I need another thought. Carter? We can't type, we need it solved for x before we start typing okay. stuff in our calculator. Since we don't have it solved for x yet, we can't type anything really in the calculator. Unless your calculator is that fancy and then get it out of this high school because that is way too fancy for high school. Thank you. Kendra? Is it possible to drop the one? We can't drop the one. Okay. That one is important. Okay. Now you mentioned the word distribute, which could be an option. I'm not 100% sure if I want to go that option or not. It's not the option I usually go. Okay, but an option is log of 5.2 is technically a number, right? It's some crazy decimal, but it is a number. When you have a number outside of parentheses, what is one option that you can do with that number? You could distribute. So we could distribute and make this 3x log of 5.2 plus 1 times log of 5.2, which is still log of 5.2. So that 1 is still there in that sense. So you can make it 3x log of 5.2 plus log of 5.2. And then you could take solving steps from there. Subtract the log of 5.2 over, and then you'll have to divide by 3 and log 5.2. And it's not a bad way to go. I just debate which way to go, which way you guys will like better. Did you have another thought? What could we divide by at this point? I wouldn't divide, I wouldn't touch the 3x plus 1 yet. But think of it as... If this is 3x plus 1 times log of 5.2, that log of 5.2 is what's really messing things up. So can we divide by the log of 5.2? And we can't. Okay, so your options are, and I don't care which way you go. You're probably going to go whichever way I take you, I'm sure. But we could distribute the log of 5.2 and then take solving steps to finish. Or we can divide the log of 5.2 and then take solving steps to finish. Both ways will have about equivalent steps. It all comes down to, in the end, entering it all in the calculator appropriately. So I tend to teach divide by log of 5.2. And we can do that because it's 3x plus 1 times log of 5.2. So if it's 3x plus 1 times log of 5.2, we divide by log of 5.2. Those cancel. So on the left, my remaining equation is 3x plus 1. On the right, well, log of 400 divided by log of 5.2 is going to be some what? Decimal. You can go ahead and write that decimal down if you want, but make sure you don't clear it off your calculator. Or what I tend to do is I'm just going to write down that this is log of 400 divided by log of 5.2, and I'm going to come back and use the calculator at the end. If you want to go ahead and put it in the calculator and write the decimal down instead, your choice. Now, go back to 7th grade, 6th grade math. When you first started learning, this is just a number on the right. 3x plus 1 equals some number. How do you solve for x? If it's 3x plus 1, we subtract one, hopefully, right? The opposite of adding one is we're going to subtract one. If we subtract one on the left, we're going to subtract one on the right. Notice what I did. I just wrote minus one after that fraction. Again, we're going to enter this on the calculator, right? So if you already have a decimal in your calculator, you're going to use what that decimal is and hit minus one. Now, that leaves me with the equation. 3x equals log of 400 divided by log of 5.2 minus 1. What's the
What's my last step to solving for x? Divide by 3. If I divide the left by 3, we divide the right by 3. It looks ugly, but you get to use your calculator. You have to use your calculator. How's that? You have to. So, grab your calculator and give this a whirl. Go in the order we did things. First, you need to divide your two logs. I would say get that answer by hitting equals. Minus 1 equals. Divide by 3 equals. I would hit equals after each step to be safe. So, try and meet me in the end. Log 400, in parentheses, divided by log 5.2, in parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and hit equals. I have this 3.63414 number, right? Now I'm going to what? Minus 1. Equals. Now I have a 2.634 number. And now I'm going to divide by 3. Equals. Now I have a final answer. Does your final answer match my final answer? <laughs> so go figure out where you went wrong, right? Okay. And obviously, you can tweak this to fit your style, right? Do it as you go if you prefer. I don't care. I just have to pick a way to teach it and go with it. 0 0.8780, the 4 tells the 0 to stay. A. One missed key can do it, right? One slip of the finger can mess it up. The numbers are so radically different. It's like, uh, oh. Okay, guys. Start working on E. Here's what I'm going to say. Is I'm going to say start working on E. And we will pick up with it tomorrow as a class, at the beginning of class, and see if you've done anything correct. We'll see that you've done it correctly. Is that better? Now, um, keep working on that. For tonight, you can start the homework, but you do not need to finish it. You will not be able to finish it unless you really want to work hard at figuring out what I haven't taught yet.